I know people don't believe in spirits. I myself never did until I lived in this one house. It was a newer home too, so it was odd to me. Perhaps it was just energy left over from a long time ago, I don't know. But my entire family saw stuff. It first started out with noises. The first summer there, my sister and I were left alone all day while my parents worked. We were 15 and 10 at the time, and one day I heard coughing in my parents' room. My sister and I thought it was our father. We thought maybe he was homesick. So all day we kept hearing coughing, and finally about after five hours I decided to peek in and ask dad if he needed medicine. There was no one in the room. We went in to check the master bathroom and nothing, no one was there. Then a few days later we heard the back shower open. It was one of those rolling kind that made quite a bit of noise. We heard it open and close and we sat there waiting for my mom or dad to come out of the room. Again, nothing. They were not home. That summer, my cousins visited and they too heard the coughing and shower. We lived there for five years and things got worse and worse over time. Tapping on the walls. My sister and her best friend were having a sleepover and her friend saw someone walk out of my room. She said hi to me, but it wasn't me. My cousin saw someone walk out of the bathroom into my sister's room. She thought it was me, but I was out front at the time. My aunt stayed over on New Year's Eve once. She bitched me and my sister out for walking all over her airbed and waking her up. We did not do that. My mother was walking down the hallway in the early morning and she thought my dad was behind her and asked if he wanted a full or half pot of coffee. When she got out of the hallway, she turned to see a man in a plaid shirt that then ran past her. My sister's friend stopped coming over because she was in my sister's room and a Susan B. Anthony coin my grandpa had given her flew off the shelf and hit the wall, leaving a dent in the wall. My sister was walking out the door at the time and thought her friend was the one who threw it. She had been on the top bunk sitting down. My friend got up and called her mom to leave right away and never came back over. My best friend stayed over once for a week and she stayed in my room with her evil cat that hated me. I slept on the bottom bunk of my sister's bed. My friend asked why I kept coming in the room to bug the cat, why I kept knocking on the walls, and why I would lay on the bed only to get up and leave. I did none of this. That cat hated me and would attack me. She said the cat would flip out and hiss and meow like I was in the room. Then one time I got up to go pee in the middle of the night. In our bathroom, the way the mirror was, if you looked over your right shoulder while on the toilet, you could see into the kitchen. I always did this when I left the door open. It was like 3 a.m., so the door was left open and I looked in the mirror. I saw a man standing in the kitchen by the fridge. At first I thought it was my dad. Then he turned around like he knew I was looking. And there were no eyes, just dark patches. And he opened his mouth, perhaps to say something. I don't know. I stopped mid-pee and ran back into my room, all the while keeping an eye on the guy. I never went pee at night again. I was so happy when we moved. I have no clue what all that was, but so many people witnessed and saw things that it wasn't just my imagination. In 1993, our family lived in a small town called Ritzville, Washington. I was five years old at the time, and what I experienced has left me thinking about it every single night for the past 22 years. I shared a room and bunk bed with my little brother. The room had a small, fairly deep closet located a few feet from the foot of the bunk bed. Located on the wall was a small vent that at night, when the living room light was on, would shine through giving my room a slight ambient glow. Well, one night I had to go to the bathroom, and when I sat up and was about to take the covers off, I noticed that at the foot of the bunk bed was this tall black figure with a giant oval head that spanned the width of the bunk bed staring at me. It had two small yellow eyes that were far apart, and I noticed this thing stood around six feet tall. Its skin was charcoal and lumpy. I stared at it for a good five seconds before I threw the covers over my head. Five seconds of this monster being ingrained into my head. I could feel the evil surrounding it. I was up for a while before I fell asleep again so I have no idea how long it was there. In the morning, the first thing I noticed was the closet door. 
I make it a habit to close closet doors every night, but it was wide open. My mother was the first to know about it, and you know how most parents kind of wave off their kids' experiences as a bad dream? She didn't. She knew I saw something, because they've seen things. I had nightmares for weeks after seeing it. In my dreams, this being picked me up and started torturing me. I haven't seen it since, and I never want to see it again. Years ago, I worked at a place in the Pike Place Market in Seattle. That whole market has all kinds of ghost stories. I stayed after closing one night because I was going to meet some friends for a show in Belltown, and it was easier to just stay at work than go home and come back. I got hungry, so I went to the kitchen to make a sandwich. The only bread there was unsliced, and when I went to the knife drawer, the drawer was empty. We had just hired a new cook, and he had rearranged the whole kitchen to suit his ego, and he hid the knives. I crashed around all over the kitchen trying to find where he hid the knives and gave up. When I walked back to the counter where I had set the loaf of bread, there was a bread knife sitting right next to it. At first I freaked out, but then said thanks out loud and made my sandwich. As I was leaving a little later, I walked past my co-worker's open office door and noticed that she had left her computer on. This was back in the day when you were supposed to shut down your computer by going to the DOS prompt and typing park or something. I went into her office and sat down to turn off her computer. When I got up to leave, there was a stack of four office chairs piled in front of the doorway, locking me in. I had just walked through that doorway. I was six feet away and never heard a thing. Then I started freaking out, pushed the chairs aside and got out of there as fast as I could. The next day, I told my coworkers and one of them contacted a Native American spiritual leader who came in and supposedly cleaned the place of spirits. He said that they were just lonely and wanted me to stay and keep them company. I studied abroad in Italy my junior year of college and lived at this old castle. The students stayed in what is affectionately called the Croft. Every night we would hear noises, like someone walking, but we would just assume it was the old wood creaking or somebody going to use the restroom. One night, the whole group except me and two others decided to go to Milan for the weekend. Well, one evening as I lay in bed reading a book and waiting for my friend to get back from the library, I distinctly heard the sound of the croft door open and close. I then heard halting steps on the stairs. These were not subtle creaks, but obvious footsteps, so I assumed it was my friend or his girlfriend coming back, so of course thought nothing of it. Then the steps began to sound closer and closer to my door but I heard no voices and an unexpected chill crawled down my spine. I felt nervous, so I yelled, Is that you, Dave? The steps stopped outside my door, but again, no one spoke. I was starting to become terrified when I heard my friend and his girlfriend walking down the path outside, and I immediately stuck my head out my window and called out to them and asked who was in the croft. They replied that no one but me was in there. I did not even hesitate. I jumped out my window, and the moment I was out, I heard the door to my room slam open and heard what I can only describe as a widespread scream of rage. No one in the group ever believed me, but I asked the castle's cook about it, and she explained that there were ghosts in the croft. Three, in fact. One little girl that liked to play pranks, one weeping woman, and one malicious man with a hate for the living. When the house we live in today was for sale, we went with our realtor for a tour. The 80 plus year old lady who lived there at the time was there. She stayed in the corner bedroom on a bed and read a book while we looked around. After we left, my wife and I thought it was strange that she hung out in that room and not the master bedroom, that the bed in the master didn't look like it had been slept in in a while, and that the master bath had clearly not been used in a long time. Once we bought the house, the neighbor told us that the old lady didn't like to spend any time in the master suite anymore because that's where her husband Ray had died. Fast forward a few years. My wife is out for the day, so it's just me, our three-year-old, and our baby at the house. After putting the baby down for a nap, I asked the three-year-old to hang out in the bedroom while I got a quick shower. He had gotten one of these toys a few days before, but had been having a lot of trouble figuring it out. 
I went in the shower and left him on the bed with that toy and a few others. When I was in the shower, I thought I heard him talking to someone. Maybe my wife had come home early, but when I got out, it was still just me and him. Now though, he was sitting on the bed, proficiently working on the gyro toy. I told my kid I was happy he figured it out and he replied, Oh, it's easy now that Grandpa Ray showed me how it works. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button and the subscribe button for more content in the future.